It's now my honor to introduce to you Joel Moskowitz. Dr. Moskowitz is the director of the Center for Family and Community Health in the School of Public Health at University of California, Berkeley. It is one of the 37 prevention research centers supported by the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This center, is, is, its mission is to improve the health of families and communities. Dr. Moskowitz was recently involved in a review of 23 case control studies on mobile phone use and tumor risk involving 37,000 participants. The meta-analysis published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in October 2009 found that the more robust study showed using a mobile phone for a decade or longer was associated with increased risk for developing a brain tumor. Dr. Moskowitz. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm going to summarize a review of mobile phone use and tumor risk my colleagues and I published a year ago, uh, and then briefly review the overall results of the 13-nation Interphone study that was published earlier this year, examine cell phone use trends in the United States, and finally discuss public policy options my colleagues and I at UC Berkeley recommended in an op-ed that was published uh, on April 28th of this year in the San Francisco Chronicle. A year ago, uh, my colleagues and I published a meta-analysis of the epidemiologic research on mobile phone use and tumor risk. Meta-analysis is a quantitative approach that combines the results of studies that employ similar methods to look at the overall trends in the finding. The lead author, Dr. Myung, is an MD epidemiologist who visited us for a year from the National Cancer Center in South Korea. Uh, two of my co-authors are here today, Diana McDonald and Jean Kaznitz. Our search of the literature identified 23 case control studies that contained about 38,000 participants. You might ask, what is a case control study? In a case control study, people who have tumors called cases are matched to people without tumors, considered controls, who are otherwise similar in terms of age, race, sex, and location. Then data are collected to compare the histories of the two groups to see if characteristics differ between them. The exposure of interest is past mobile phone use. A measure of association between mobile phone use and tumor risk is computed. This measure is called an odds ratio. An odds ratio of one indicates no risk, less than one means a reduced tumor risk, and greater than one means increased tumor risk for the mobile phone users. Case control studies cannot prove causation, thus they cannot provide conclusive evidence. However, this is the best method epidemiologists have to study rare diseases like brain tumors. Overall, we found no association between mobile phone use and risk of a variety of tumors, not just brain tumors. We also looked at cordless phone use, which showed similar findings as did the cell phones at least in, in some of the studies that looked at cordless phone use. So that, th those are also of concern. This finding of no effect is what our government, the mobile phone industry, and many scientific advisory groups around the world cite when they state that the weight of the evidence shows, okay? However, we argue that not all the evidence deserves equal weight. When we graded the studies based on research quality and then sorted them, two distinct patterns emerged. In the high-quality studies, we found increased tumor risk for mobile phone use. These studies were mostly funded by government or foundation. In the low-quality studies, we found what appeared to be reduced tumor risk for mobile phone use. These studies were all or in part funded by uh, the mobile phone industry. These studies had numerous problems that produced spurious results that were often dismissed by their authors in, in many cases. Brain tumors can grow slowly, taking decades to develop. So we looked at eight studies that examined people who use cell phones for 10 or more years. Overall, we found 24% increased risk of brain tumors. Here, too, the four high-quality studies found higher risk, 54% increased risk for the cell phone users. These studies were conducted by Lennart Hardell and his colleagues in Sweden. In contrast, the four low-quality studies found no risk. These were part of a 13-nation study called Interphone 
that was funded by the World Health Organization and the mobile phone industry. So what did we learn from our meta-analysis? The high-quality studies found increased brain tumor risk, especially among people who use cell phones 10 or more years. We need more research to examine some key issues, including the effects of cell phone use longer than 10 years, because brain tumors can take four or more decades to develop, the effects of cell phone use among children and teens, because their developing brains are more vulnerable, more recent patterns of cell phone use and newer technologies, because these studies were done basically through 2004. And we need to look at other tumor sites besides the brain, especially the salivary glands, where there's, there's been some evidence of risk in Israel, and uh, near where the, the phones are held, right? And reproductive organs where, near where they're carried, essentially in your pocket. Earlier this year, the 13-nation Interphone study published overall results for two types of brain tumors, meningioma and glioma. Meningioma is a tumor of the outer covering of the brain. Although it is generally non-malignant, it can, it can be fatal, and it often is. Glioma is a tumor of the glial cells which surround the neurons. It is the most common type of brain tumor and is generally malignant or cancerous and often fatal. The interphone data were collected between 2000 and 2004. The average amount of cell phone use was very light back then compared to today, less than 100 hours of lifetime use. So the results underestimate tumor risk for current cell phone users. There were numerous technical problems with the study, uh, which the authors admitted biased the results and reduced estimates of tumor risk. And I think uh, Lloyd Morgan may discuss that in more detail. After the investigators corrected for study bias, meningioma risk was not associated with cell phone use, even heavy use. In contrast, heavy cell phone use was associated with 40% increased glioma risk. This increased risk held up in 44 different analyses. They made all kinds of different assumptions and redid the, redid the analyses to try to eliminate certain kinds of biases, and the, the results held up. They were robust. Moreover, the, re, the increased risk grew to 82% after the investigators corrected for study bias. However, this latter finding was buried in the second appendix of the paper, which appears only on the website. And there's a preface to that section where they try to make you dismiss this table altogether. Uh, some of the authors didn't even want this, this table to see the light of day from what I've read on Microwave News website. A dose-response relationship was found for glioma risk with increasing years of cell phone use in an analysis that corrected for study bias. In this analysis, 10 or more years of cell phone use was associated with more than a doubling of the risk of glioma compared to less than two years of cell phone use. The authors of the Interphone study reported the study was inconclusive, which they probably could have said before they ever did the study because all case control studies are inconclusive, although this one was probably more inconclusive than most for a variety of reasons. However, a few of the original investigators have begun to warn the public about how to use cell phones safely. This chart compares Hardell's results for 10 or more years of mobile phone use with the results from the 2010 Interphone study after correction for study bias. Acoustic neuroma is a tumor of the nerve that connects the ear to the brain. Hardell found almost a tripling, a, three times the risk of a tumor. Interphone is yet to report these results. I've written two of the lead investigators and they said they're working on it. At least one of them said, the other one didn't respond. Uh, and yet, it took them six years to publish uh, this, this paper after the completion of the collection of data. So something strange is going on, I think. Uh, for meningioma, Hardell found 50% increased risk for 10 or more years of mobile phone use, whereas Interphone found no increased risk even after adjusting for study bias. For glioma, however, both Hardell and Interphone found more than twice the risk for those who use cell phones 10 or more years. So we have consistent evidence from two independent sources of increased glioma risk among long-term users of cell phones. This chart shows the increase in cell phone subscribers in the U.S. from 1985 to 2010. As you can see, virtually everyone in the U.S. currently uses cell phones, including uh, two-thirds of children over the age of seven. The average number of hours of cell phone use is now clearly many times greater than that being used in the studies we reviewed. In fact, the average user will fall into the interphone study high-use group which was 1,640 hours of lifetime use, within 14 years of first use. 
So the average user in, in, in the U.S. Uh, should have roughly twice the risk of glioma after 14 years of use. There are about six gliomas per, per year in the U.S. for every 100,000 people. So doubling this risk uh, means that uh, individual risk is still going to be fairly small. However, from a public health perspective, this translates into 18,000 potentially preventable brain cancers per year, just looking at the glioma data and the current estimates. Nonetheless, people shouldn't panic because their individual risk is still fairly low. It's not a message you want to put out there necessarily, but I think it's important not to overplay the, d the data. This estimate also may be conservative because over the longer term, especially among those who began using cell phones as children, we are likely to see even greater brain tumor risk. So what should we do, given that we have highly suggestive evidence that much of the population is or soon will be at increased brain tumor risk due to cell phone use. It's a uh, slide from the FDA which says no evidence linking cell phone use to risk of brain tumors, which was their summary, headline summary for the Interphone study. The National Cancer Institute had almost the identical headline. If you read down further, it'll say something about no, no conclusive evidence, but the headline leads you to think there's no evidence. This is our, our federal agency, agencies. So our federal administration has taken a denialist position and tries to allay public fears by arguing we have no evidence or no conclusive evidence of risk. The Congress is concerned about this wait and see stance, especially after the death of Teddy Kennedy, and has held hearings but does not have sufficient votes to adopt legislation, in part because the mobile phone industry, like many other industries, has enormous political influence over our policymakers and regulators. Industry tries to maintain the status quo by repeating the conservative wait-and-see statements issued by government agencies and scientific advisory bodies. In 1996, the federal government adopted safety standards, I believe they were recommended by the industry, that cell phones must comply with. The standards assume that heat is the only way a cell phone can harm you, which we now believe is false. The phones are tested to meet safety standards using a simulated head from a 200-pound adult male spending six minutes on a phone call. It also assumes that the phone is not directly against the head. Thus, the federal standards seem wholly inadequate based on who uses cell phones today and how much they are used. The mobile phone industry publishes warnings about maintaining a minimum safe distance between you and your phone, usually five-eighths inch or one inch. But these warnings usually appear in small print with obtuse language buried in some of the user's manuals, uh, where people never, which people never read anyway. My research colleagues and I invoke the precautionary principle and call for precautionary health warnings and safe use recommendations. We also appeal to government for updated safety standards and more research funding. The right to know button, by the way, uh, was worn by activists at a hearings in San Francisco which resulted in the adoption of the first U.S. law to require that cell phone radiation levels be displayed at the point of purchase. The industry has sued San Francisco over this legislation as well as pulling its conference from the city. And that, that may be serving as a deterrent from many other cities that are now considering similar legislation. So if there are any pro bono lawyers in, in the audience or lawyers who want to do some pro bono work on this, I think they can put, be put to good use in working with some of these cities. Uh, just let one of us know. In fact, I know they can be put to good use. Uh, what is the precautionary principle? The principle is an approach to risk management that justifies preventive measures or policies despite scientific uncertainty about the risk of harm. In 2003, San Francisco became the first governmental body in the U.S. to adopt this principle for environmental policy. The European Union and many nations adhere to this principle. Health agencies in 12 other nations have issued precautionary health warnings about cell phone use. Many of these warnings focus on limiting cell phone use, especially among children and youth. Here is an example of a precautionary health warning from a bill presented to the state legislature in Maine by Andrea Boland earlier this year. The industry lobbied heavily and defeated the bill. Research suggests there are many potentially harmful effects of cell phone use on human health besides tumors. We need much more high-quality research conducted completely independent of industry. If we continue to engage in denialism and groupthink, I fear we will suffer the consequences either in our time or in the future. If we assessed a dollar per year 
on each cell phone, this would generate $290 million annually. Eight cents per month will generate that much per cell phone. This fund could be used to publicize precautionary health warnings and safe use recommendations, research effects of electromagnetic radiation on health, and promote development of safer technologies. Uh, thank you for your attention.